Welcome to Empire Building, the podcast where we talk about building big businesses and even bigger lives. I'm your co-host, Sarah Reynolds. I'm Kimber Lovett Minkiti. And I'm Seychelle Van Poole. There are times when I find myself just not quite nailing it on my goals. I don't know about y'all, but like sometimes I just feel like I'm not nailing it and I feel myself like sliding backwards and You know, I'm hearing a lot of our friends across the country dealing with market changes right now, or price points are changing, or interest rates are changing, or the economy is changing, or life is happening to them. And all of a sudden, the plan that they had mapped out for this year or next year, the execution is looking different. Their progress towards the goal is looking different. And they're finding themselves in a place where they're having to reassess where they're at And all of the different distractions that are happening in their life, AKA when life hits you in the face, right? How do I still, how do I still hit the goal? How do I still get to where I want to go? And so um, I have to give a huge shout out today for what we're going to talk about because Jay Papazan and Chris Dixon, who are the co-hosts of the One Thing podcast, um, gave us the inspiration for this episode. And so if you want additional information on this topic, Their episode number is 385. We'll put it in the show notes for you too. But they give us some great topics and questions to ask on when life hits you in the face, but the goal still needs to be obtained, what do we do to help get there? So Mm. let's dive in today. The first first thing we're going to talk about is um, when someone's struggling with living their one thing, And that can be when you have um, your market changing, when you are trying to identify like, what's the one thing I need to be doing right now to get me where I need to go? The first thing um, that we can really ask ourselves is like, am I really clear about where I'm going? Because oftentimes generality kills the planning and execution. Am I really clear on where I'm going? And when we think about that, it's how do you get clear on that? Mm. Uh, because there's there's two meanings to the one thing. The first mm-hmm. meaning is like a really big esoteric question, right? Like, what is the one thing as to why I'm here on this earth? Why am I here, right? What is the one reason why I'm here on this earth? And what am I here to achieve? Um, that's a really big question. Oftentimes, people may know that answer. Or they're in pursuit of that answer. And there's another thing they've got to work on, which is what is the goal I need to be achieving. And they're not clear on either where they're going or what they're achieving, or most importantly, why they want to achieve that goal. Um, and, you know, so I would important. just love to know from y'all, yeah, how many how many of you have, you know, set a goal for yourself or for your team that you weren't really bought in on? Have you mm. ever had that happen? No, for sure. I mean, it depends on, uh, you always want to be encouraging your team members, obviously, to, to set goals. And as a, as a team, sometimes you're going to set a goal that you don't always, um, not not agree with, but um, struggle with. Yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely, um, in terms of getting the buy-in a- around the goal. Um, but no, figuring out what the goal is and the why behind it is important. Mm-hmm. I think that why question is so powerful. Um, mm-hmm. When we do set a goal, why is that important? Why is that important to them, your yeah. team members? And why is it important to you? Yes. And yes. sort of mm-hmm. understanding uh, that is key. Yeah. And the rumble that needs to happen for that to really be like everybody to buy into it. Sometimes I think as leaders, we think, okay, our goal is to be the visionary and to come in and like charge the storm. This is the mm-hmm. goal. And I think creating space for people to buy in, I think, Sarah, that's such a good point. Like, why is that goal important to mm-hmm. me? Right. Mm-hmm. Why does the team achieving that thing, how does that impact my life or my family? Yeah. And why would I be bought in to sacrifice, especially right now, right? Like yeah. you might be doing triple the work to just get to the same or below outcomes mm-hmm. that you had financially. Yeah, in the true. last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Why is that important that we come door knock on a Saturday morning? I do not want to do that, right? Yeah. And so really helping, even at the little goals, like for a team, to get that buy-in. Yeah, the why is so important. And, you know, there was an example that Jay gave that really made sense to me where he said, you know, when you're goal setting, you you could say, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to New York. Like my goal is to go to New York. And what he, what he said was, you know, the first thing is, is um, if you're going to go to New York, there's several different ways you can go, right? Plane, train, automobile, walk, hitchhike, you know, Uber. You can figure out a way to get there. Bike. But there's only so many different ways to get there physically. He said the second thing, though, is people are often delusional on how long it's actually going to take to get to their goal, or in True. this case, to New York, right? Like if Sarah and Kimber are starting from D.C. and I'm starting from Dallas— 
those are two very different distances to get to the same destination. So you have to be realistic in like where you're actually starting from and where you're going. Um, And he said, you know, okay, well, so now you're going to go to New York. What happens if you don't get to New York? He said, a lot of people will tell you, well, okay, if I don't get to New York, maybe I'll stop off in New Jersey or maybe I'll stop off in, you know, Philadelphia. And and Jay will go back to them and say, okay, well, if you're going to stop off in Philadelphia and you're okay being in Philadelphia, why did you want to go to New York in the first place? Right? When we're not clear on why the goal is important, it's easy for us to accept less than that or to accept a different alternative because we're not clear on the destination and why we're going there in the first place. And so if you're struggling with figuring out your one thing and what that goal needs to be to get you there, that example might help you understand like, why is the goal important to you? What do you need to be doing to get there? How do you know you're going to be successful and where are you going to go? So that might help you get there. Yeah. And I think say the by when, right? When I think about that beautiful example of like the the map, you might say, well, okay, Philly's okay. Well, yeah. is it okay for that to be the final destination? Or like a lot of us, right? We work in these goals of the year. So if you got to Philly this year and then maybe you moved from Philly to, to the next year, is that okay? Right? So like understanding the goal, mm-hmm. the like what's important about that and by when do you need to have that happen? Absolutely. So that you could also understand like, you know what? Maybe I, I don't need to do that this year, but- and that can help kind of chunk down to get to your goals going forward. And so, and sometimes that happens when life hits you in the face. Th- those questions yeah. are asked, yes. right? It's like yeah. at times, um, you know, I remember when Olivia was diagnosed with hearing loss. Yeah. And I mm-hmm. had to relook at all of my goals mm-hmm. uh, w- with, with in all aspects of my life when mm-hmm. It, my priorities had to change, right? Uh, and so many times when life hits, we got to re reevaluate and ask ask the que- these questions. So yeah. so good. Yeah, you're so right, um, Kimber. There's an activity we can walk through on this too that yes. kind of helps chunk this down. I'd love it if you'd walk us through that. I'd love to. And this is one that I, you know, I struggle with, right? This to do mm-hmm. list and your success list are not the same thing. So if you're like me and you love to like make a big list and like I take great pride in like crossing things off the list. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I literally have like an active list in my iPad and I find that I'm going to go to the lowest denominator for the easiest thing, right? And so I'm, I'm going to often not focus on the thing that might have the most impact, but that might take a little bit more time or more thinking or more uncomfortableness, right, to do it. And so one, you want to look at how many, do you have too many things between home and work, right? Do you kind of set out to have, you've got a lot of things that you're juggling that you have to do. You're spinning lots of plates. Mm -hmm. So the first exercise is to list everything that you need to do to just think, just take this week, right? You're coming up on on the last week, right, of of where you are, right, in a month, say that. So you're going to list everything that you need to do personal and and professional for the next month, right? Your laundry, your running errand, like everything on the list. And then you're gonna actually go back through your list and put a star next to the most important items that are gonna impact your 20%, right? Because the first thing you did was say, hey, Mm -hmm. what's the goal? What's the thing that's most important to me? Then you're gonna isolate those stars and you're just gonna look at the stars and chunk that down again to the top 20% of that list. Mm. And ultimately, you want to be able to pick one item to focus. What's the one thing on your list that by doing that will make everything else either easier, unnecessary, or is just the top priority, like Sarah was saying, right? When you're dealing with something pretty significant, you're going to help. You want to put, that's the priority. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things on the list, but calling the doctor today and booking the appointment is actually the most, if I did nothing else today Mm -hmm. and I only got one thing done, What's the most important thing for me to accomplish today that actually will help me move to the 20%? And I find it's really helpful. Like I have to nail that thing in the beginning of the day. Like I have Mm -hmm. to, because a lot of our worlds, right? Like I kind of release that the end of the day is going to get wild and crazy, right? For me, like once the boys come home, like things just are going to go off, the wheels start rocking. So I have to get the one thing done before 12 o'clock in the day, ideally before 11. And by chunking that list down, so I've had to like flip my list completely upside down. And then I can still take great satisfaction and cross things off. But now I just get one big thing that my goal is to check that thing off by the end of the day. I love that. So good. So good. Um, Sometimes you have figured out your one thing, right? You figured Mm -hmm. out your one thing, your focus. um, And then a lot of what Kimber's talking about is the execution of that as well. Um, And so what is the execution plan? And so you've got your your list um, of things to do, um, which doesn't mean that you're not successful if you don't do those things, right? Meaning like, Mm -hmm. that's what Kimber's saying is like, you have your list, but if you don't get everything done on your list, that doesn't mean that you're unsuccessful. 
yeah. right? Many times your list will be much longer. And as long as you get that main priority done, that is successful, right? But where mm -hmm. people struggle is in the execution to get to the destination, to get to the goal. I, I have found in um, leading my sales team, this is, this is the hardest part. Um, mm -hmm. Many times, you know, setting the goal, they, they have a, a vision for themselves for that year, right? Um, they have, uh, they've been given a plan, right, on on how to do it. But then you've got to actually work the plan. <laughs> you have to work the plan, that is right? Hard. So it is hard. Yes. Yeah, you have to execute. <laughs> yeah. You have to execute. Uh -huh. And so it's like, what is it? Ideas are praised, but uh, execution is worshipped, right? Worshiped. So making yeah. sure that you have a plan in terms of your execution. Um, and so, and, and that should be reflective, of course, of your time, which we're going to talk about. Um, but what are the areas of our life that are foundational and truly impactful? So if, if we're going to get extra extraordinary in a few things, right? We cannot be all things mm -hmm. to all people. We cannot be um, perfect in every area of our life. Um, what are the circles that we need to look at? What are the circles of our life that we need to look at? So um, your spiritual life, uh, physical, self, personal life, key relationships, your job, business, finance, and then what are the what is your execution plan to get to that goal? And you break it down to the one, two, three things that you need to do to get there, right? And then making sure that you're doing those things. So don't focus on the entire list, but instead focus on the most important things to get you to that goal in those circles of your life. I love that, Sarah. And I think part of what the power and even just the name of the our episode, crushing it when life hits you in the face. When you start with that level of clarity, like just know like things are going to happen. Life is going to show mm -hmm. up for you. That's going to try to knock you off of course, right? There's some sort of crisis that's going to show up in your world at some point. And so by being really, really clear, doesn't mean that you can't go back and revisit it. Like it doesn't mean that you can't go back and, and revisit is a destination still in New York, but ultimately like you want to be able to know, I, okay, this is the one thing I'm going to do to help me still move to execute on the goal that's most important, even mm -hmm. while like I might get lost in having to deal with a really real issue that's coming up in your world. So mm -hmm. good. That's absolutely true. You know, and sometimes when life hits you in the face, like I can say when my, you know, dad was declining late last year and we still had our business was also changing and the market was shifting at the same time, right? Both of those things um, two different people matter equally. Like my team with my dad passing away, that is important to them, but their livelihood is more important to them, right? And on my side, my people's livelihood is important and my dad's health, right? Mm -hmm. And managing that was the most important thing to me. And those felt yeah. equal sometimes because my people are very important to me and being there for my dad at the same time. And sometimes you have that where you have a screaming child and a client on the phone at the same time, right? Those feel equally yeah. important in the moment. <laughs> and so if you're struggling feeling like everything feels all important all at the same time, you know, the environment um, and where we're living and working is always changing. And so taking a break and pulling yourself back for a second and saying, okay, I need to pull myself, remove myself from just a quick second, call the client back, take the child in the other room and sit them down and talk to them, right? Like there still is always one thing that can take the priority in that moment and you can revisit the second one. But if it's really big, like let's say between my dad's health and the team, right? And you don't know where to start, right? The first thing that I did was I, I sat down and said, okay, who do I think I could ask that really knows me that can help me move in the direction that I need to go? Um, sometimes the people that are closest to us um, can give us, right, that simple dose of reality that we need. And, you know, one of my closest friends said, you know, your your team gets it. They're going to be there. Ask them to help carry the load for the next couple of months so that you can do what you need to do for your family. So that immediately gave me the sense of priority of, like, if you're not there during your dad's time, are you going to regret that the most? And it was like, I, yeah, absolutely I am. That's where I need to be right now. And so then if that is the most important thing, then how do I adapt everything else around it to support that? Um, you know, and I think too, if if you're asking really big questions, like sometimes things feel really crazy and it's hitting all at once and you're asking, is this the right career or is this the right role for me right now? Mm. Um, or is my health failing me, causing me not to be able to work the way I need to show up for work? Or are my fi finances a disaster? Sometimes it's a symptom actually where you're feeling burned out at work or you're feeling run down in a relationship, but there's a symptom 
that someone who knows and loves you can ask, whether it's a friend, a coworker, a neighbor, a, a partner, uh, you know, a spouse, that that can ask those questions out of love because they care about you and your well-being and and your success, not because they're coming out of a place of judgment. And so I think whenever you're you're in a deep struggle with multiple priorities or multiple challenges at once, being able to ask that is um, it's a really beautiful thing. And I think the the big thing here, what say is saying is everything is not equally important. No, even like, though it might everything feel like is, it. It might <laughs> feel like it in the moment, but it is not equally important. I mean, one of the most powerful parts of the One Thing book is they talk about, you know, um, most of the circles of our life are rubber, rubber balls. Like if we drop yeah. it, right? If we yeah. drop that rubber ball, like you, you drop your team, you drop your business, right? Um, many times when you're able to come back to it, it will bounce back right? Mm -hmm. um, but there are certain things in our lives that are glass balls. And um, I know that Say is so proud of herself in terms of yes. the, what she didn't view everything as equally important, even though in the moment it felt that way. Yeah, it felt um, like it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so we're giving you permission, all of our listeners right now, if, if life's hitting you in the face, if you're overwhelmed, if you can't handle everything around you, just know it's not equally important. It's not mm -hmm. equally important. And we give you permission to choose the most important, to choose the most important. So it, it's counterbalance. It's counterbalance. Say was in a season, right, right? With her dad. And boy, is she glad she had those moments and, yeah. and will always remember I'm those moments. I'm so thankful for that. You know, and that's something yeah. I've shared with you all is, um, I, you know, losing him. And I know, Sarah, for you, losing your Mima was a very emotional thing. And you prioritized making sure you were getting there and spending the time that you needed and the same with my dad. And while losing him is incredibly sad and I miss him and, um, you know, that's hard, right? Like losing losing somebody really close to you is hard. I don't live with guilt and I don't live no. with regret. Yeah. And that to me allows me to process the grief differently because mm. I'm not, I feel like I'm getting to skip two phases because I, I was mindful and thoughtful about the one thing in that season. And my one thing was making sure we were doing what we needed to for him so that I, I could show up as the daughter I wanted to be in that time. Yeah. And yep. like this, this concept is, has given me so many gifts and that I could be present for what I wanted to do and who I wanted to be and how I wanted to show up and why right? Yeah. Why that's important. Um, so that well, now I can focus with a much lighter load on the next season. Yeah. I think, um, you know, every time we say no or to mm -hmm. something, it gives someone else an opportunity to say yes, right? Meaning it's that's an right. opportunity. And so we talked about that when um, I interviewed you, you on this, say, and just the power that came from you telling your team, you know, I need help. Like asking other people, I need yep. help, right? And so you focus on your one thing, right? While other people, that then gives them an opportunity to shine, them an yes. opportunity to grow. And so don't be afraid, you know, to say no to the things that you need to say no to and say yes to the most important things at that time in your life, at that time in your life. Some few, like we, ha we do have some extra sort of tips on this. Um, sometimes just the clarity around what that one thing is, is just can be such a struggle. Um, mm -hmm. So just some questions that you can ask is, what is the one thing that I can do? Um, and Kimber mentioned this, but I'm going to say it again. What is the one thing that I can do uh, such by doing it, everything becomes easier or unnecessary. So what's the mm -hmm. one thing I can do right now? Right. Um, you know, as I shared, my daughter was diagnosed with a very rare uh, hearing loss condition when she was three and a half years old. So she was born fully hearing. Um, and around three, three and a half, we started noticing that she needed speech therapy because people mm -hmm. weren't understanding her. And um, it was quite the season where I felt like life was hitting me in the face, right? Um, yeah. My, fir my firstborn... Uh, really um, struggling. Yeah. At the time, we didn't know yeah. it was hearing loss, right? But when we found out that she couldn't hear, and I remember the doctor saying to me, um, your daughter's missing out on 50% of the world right now. 50% of the world she does not even know exists. And I became fierce about helping mm -hmm. her and figuring out how to make, make it to where she can hear. Mm -hmm. And um, I, t I had to ask myself, you know, what's the one thing? I can't control the whole thing, but what's the That's one right. thing I can do? right now, 
right? That will make it easier. And it was getting into to the highest level specialists of her, the yeah. condition she has, you know? So I would, I would clear my calendar, call, you did. Uh, visit them in person, like whatever I needed to do to make sure um, that, that I was there for her, that I could help her. And other stuff had to go. Other yeah. stuff had to go because that was my one thing, right? But that question helped me. What is the one thing that I can do right now, right? What's the best levered activity that I can do right now um, that can get me closer to my goal, right? What's the one it. thing? And then when you can focus on that one thing, it then allows for you um, to adjust and, and get to that goal uh, at some point, so. I love it. That's so good. You know, and it's it's a great reminder, Sarah, on that multitasking actually can take up to 60. If you were trying to multitask all the time, it actually takes up to 61 days of your year or 28% of your time, which is just crazy. Wow. So, you know, even just get two months back. If you can focus on one thing at a time, you're going to literally give yourself 61 days a year back, which is just incredible. So to wrap us up today, it's get clear on your one thing where you're going, what matters to you and why you want to go there, right? And then once you've decided that, decide it, get it done early in the day and every day figure out what that one thing is that you can move the needle on today and get it done early while your energy level is high. I loved the ideas are praised and execution is worshiped because once you have the plan, you need to do it. Yeah. And then ask that question, right? What's the one thing I can do that such by doing everything else becomes easier or unnecessary? And Sarah, you're so right. Not all things matter equally, even though they may feel like it at the time. So we are giving you permission here today to pay attention to your priorities, to lean in and listen to them and go out there and build that big business and an even bigger life. Bye guys. Bye.